Hello, this is Keshar, and today I'm going to show you a vegetarian dish. It's a green bean stew, it, and uh, what you need, the recipe, the, the ingredients that I have here for, for four people, as you know, I always cook for uh, four people, but you can add and subtract. It depends how many guests you have. What we need is, I have two cups of green beans cut, I'll show you, that this is another thing that you like to do. It's you cut it in one inch length. And if you want to be creative, you cut it as an, at, a, at an angle. Otherwise, you can just cut it square if you like. And then we've got potatoes. That depends what kind of potatoes you want. It doesn't matter. We've got carrots. We've got half an onion chopped. We've got some orange peel. We've got about half a sp one spoon of uh, uh, tomato paste and some saffron and mushroom. One thing that I would like to tell you about mushroom is don't ever wash mushroom. What you do, you wipe mushroom. You wipe it up, you clean it up, and that's how you get the dust off. And then you put it aside and then you chop it or you dice it as you need. So, the first thing that we do, we are going to saute the onion. So, we'll go back to the, the stove and I'll show you how to saute the onion. As you all know, I use olive oil. You put the olive oil in. You put the chopped onion and let, let it saute. While this is done, now we'll go back and I'll show you what we need to do on the other side. Always make sure that you put the on a medium heat. You don't want to burn the onion. The onion needs to be brown or uh, light brown. Now we're back here. We need to dice the mushrooms. With the potatoes, you can be creative and design the potatoes like I have done with the carrots. I have a special knife that it cuts it and gives it some gro gro groove, but you don't have to. I have used different color of potatoes. One tomato, and we chop the tomato. So after, the, after we saute the onion, I'm going to add the green beans to the onion. You have seen, I've shown you on my previous uh, recordings uh, that how to make uh, green bean stew. But this one, instead of having meat, I'm going to add mushroom. Instead of having it a little bit juicy, I would have a little bit less juice. And I serve this with uh, rice, or as your choice, it, we may only serve it with uh, uh, tadig, and you're familiar with my tadig, and I'm going to show you also how to make the special tadig that I have done. One thing that I want to mention today is that most of you always ask me how to make the saffron water. Even though that I've showed you that numerous times, I like to show you again how this is done. <coughs> you all, you need to have a container like this. Let me get one. And I'm also getting the saffron powder. I always keep my saffron powder in the freezer. So what you do, you get a small a container like this, or a cup, or anything that you like. The reason that I get containers like this, because this will keep for months in the uh, uh, refrigerator. So you don't have to keep making it. You take half a spoon or as you desire. Whatever you use of the saffron water, use 10 times of water and that needs to be hot water. 
Then you add this hot water to this, and that's what you will have, saffron water. This will keep about maybe over a couple of weeks, in the, maybe even more, in the refrigerator, and then you can use it anytime that you want. I know that saffron is expensive, and you guys always want to make sure that uh, you get your money worth. So this is one way of doing it. Okay. Now we are going to check the... I've already put the water to boil because that's what we're going to use. You put hot water and then let it sit and after it gets cold then you can put it in the refrigerator. Okay, and after the onion is sautéed then I'm going to add the green beans and the potatoes and the carrots and the everything all together and let it simmer. That would simmer uh, probably about uh, for, for an hour or so and uh, then I will show you how I make the rice and then we will have the presentation. And by the way, cheers. I hope this corona situation, excuse me, this is my napkin. So don't mind me. I know most of you keep criticizing me or minding me or asking me or telling me what to do and what not to do. Just take me for what I am and let's drink to that. <laughs> the beauty of life is that you bring your expectation down instead expecting people to be who you want them to be. Just take them for who they are. So forgive me for all my shortcomings and let's, in, let's enjoy the life and let's enjoy what we're doing together and that's the whole thing i'm doing all this because of you guys and okay so we're adding the some turmeric to this and then we'll go with the green beans before I add any other ingredients to make sure that you really glaze the green beans with the oil. After this is done, then we can add the carrots. What size you cut your carrots, your potatoes, your green beans, whatever, these are all a matter of choice, how you would like to get it done. And what appeals to you. I've always encouraged you to be creative and do what you <coughs> would like to see because one thing that I've said many times it's all about liking what you see in your plate so create your plate the way that you look inviting and the way that you want it it's like a painting how do you want to paint your plate what do you want to see in your plate? And that's like life. What do you want to see in your life? What you want to see in your life is what you need to be. So, add a little bit more oil. If the size of the potatoes are too big for you, you can cut it in half. I love black potatoes. These are red potato, red, white, and black. It looks beautiful already, you know. Now we're going to add salt and pepper. Most of you always ask me how much salt, how much pe pepper. I don't know how much salt you like. This is your choice. 
I like things salty, you may don't. So whatever you need, whatever is your taste, that's how much salt and pepper you add. Now is the time to add some water. What you do, you add about, since I told you I don't want it to be too juicy, I add about two cups of water. Don't mind me, my eyes is like a cup, so I know exactly how much I'm putting in. Two cups of water. That was one, and this is another one. Two. So you put it on high till it comes to boil. After it comes to boil, you just put it on medium and let it simmer. Now I'm going to add the tomato paste and the tomato. The last thing that you add is the, the last thing that you add is uh, uh, saffron and mushroom. Why is that? Because the mushroom it melts fast and we don't want that. The shape that you cut your tomatoes is just another thing. That how you like and what your taste is. That's, these are all personal preference. I chop them to cubes so because by the time this gets ready the only thing that melts uh, is the tomatoes sometimes sometimes because I want my potatoes or my carrots uh, to really uh, don't cook or overcook I glaze them the way that you glaze them is that uh, you uh, use uh, a little uh, oil and you uh, saute them separately and then you add it on. And that's what I saute them all together so it doesn't matter. Now, now what we need, we need our tomato paste. And as I told you that's one spoon of tomato paste. Now I'm going to add a little bit more salt because I added the water. Always make sure that you don't put too much salt. Put just enough and then you taste after the dish is cooked or in the process of this and then you can add because if you put too much salt then you cannot take it out. That's like life. If you go to extreme, sometimes you can't get it back. You know, as I always say, life is not for sale, so don't look for a bargain. And that's what we've got here. Don't get into a position that you cannot get out. So if you put too much salt, then you're done. Okay, now you see it's boiling. I'm going to cover it and I'm going to turn the heat down to simmer and I'm going to show you how to make the rice and I'll put it on okay and make sure that you're not sloppy like I am okay now we are back here we are done with the mushrooms so what I'm doing I'm going to put the mushroom aside So we've got saffron here, and I'm going to put the hot water. You 
you add the hot water give it a little shake you're done I will tell you one more time how to make saffron water you get saffron normally what you buy is not the powder so you have to grind it you grind it and it will be like powder type and that's what I do and then you add 10 times of the amount of the saffron that you use hot water let it sit you're done okay now I'm going to show you how to make the rice I use about half a cup of rice per person and if you want to have a thick tarik then you have to cook it for a longer time put on on a medium heat but longer don't put it on high heat because I've done that and burned my tarik so let's wash this you are all familiar with how to wash the rice I've shown you that numerous times before you wash it but you don't some people scrub their rice you don't do that you just keep rinsing it rinsing it till you don't see any clouded water uh, water anymore and always make sure that you put enough water don't put when you don't put too much water what happens is that the rice cooks without water and you don't want that to happen so I put the three cups of rice I'm going to add some oil and salt and let this come to boil and then we drain it as I've shown you before you're quite familiar with all that don't keep asking me again but I don't mind I'm just joking anytime you need to ask anything just send me an email like you always do and I appreciate you so we'll let this to come to boil and now I'm going to show you how to make the tadig that's the fun part okay you have a choice you want crispy tadig or you want saffron tadig you want the lettuce tadig whatever you want it's all your choice today I'm going to show you how to make saffron tadig with saffron tadig you need yogurt so you use here because it all depends it all depends how your dish is that you're going to cook the rice in or steam the rice in if you've got a bigger uh, dish or a pan then you need more uh, rice to cover the bottom of the pan so you need more uh, yogurt here I have two spoon of two spoon of yogurt one thing that most people forget to do is when they are doing this tadi they forget to add the salt because yogurt needs salt and you do, if you don't put tadi your tadi won't, won't have any taste but at the same time make sure you don't put too much salt because then it will be salty now we're going to add the saffron see this is the uh, yogurt you add the saffron I've already cooked the rice that I want to use for tadig or if you're smart sometimes you have some rice left over from another for the night before you can use that and I also add some oil one bad habit that I have anytime that I cook something I forget and I leave it I, because I'm doing so many things at the same time you make sure if you want your food or your whatever you're cooking or anything that you do if you want 
that you, you want it to be good, you have to pay attention to it. So you have to be there, you have to make sure, you have to watch it, see where it goes, how it's going. So right now, the green bean stew is <coughs> simmering and it's cooking. So I have to, you have to check and see, does it need water? Add some water. Does it need any, uh, any other things? You just have to pay attention to what you do. Okay, and this is done. Now I'm going to show you how to uh, mix the rice with. So this is the rice that I have. As, you, as you've seen, the uh, pot that I used for my uh, uh, rice is a small one, so I don't need that much taddy. So this is the rice. Then I add as I need. Always add your ingredients to the main dish that you have. You add the saffron yogurt to the rice. You don't add the rice to that because then it's too much, then you're stuck again. Now I know how much I need. So then I add accordingly. We add oil. Some of you always tell me that I use too much oil, too much sugar. If you want to be on a diet, you don't need to use my recipes. Because you can splurge once in, a, once in a while. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Cheers. <laughs> the problem with most of us is, excuse my napkin. The problem with most of us is that we are greedy. We want too much. And that is, greed is the worst thing in life. So be happy with what you've got. So too much of anything is bad. Too little of anything is bad. So as you see now, this is ready to go to the, for tadig, it's ready to go in the pot. And now the water is boiling. The water is boiling and this is ready. Now I'll bring, I'll show you how I put that in. Another thing that you need to notice or need, pay attention to is how do you lock your rice? Some people like the rice overcooked. Some like the rice to be just crispy and not too cooked. Cook it the way you like. You take the rice out, and you taste it, and you test it, and you see. When you taste it, it should m melt, or it should be soft. So we need a few more boil for this to boil a little bit more. And then we drain it. One of the things with this corona, because I have to stay home all the time, the only thing that I do is just I either have to cook or I have to read. And life is tough. But what makes it worth living is that you are capable enough to do with what you've got. If I cannot go out, if I cannot see my friends, if I have to be... Uh, sheltering and being home by myself, then I need to find out what I need to do to be happy. Adjusting with the situation that you have in life, what makes life worth living? If you lose your uh, uh, 
if you're not enthusiastic, if you're not happy with the way things are working out, then you won't enjoy life. The beauty of life is that we don't want the life. We don't, you don't want to live the life. Just live the life that is given to you. Right now we are in this situation. Tomorrow maybe something else happens. And you are obligated to be happy. You have come to this world to be happy. So under any circumstances, we have to find what makes us happy. Right now I'm standing here in front of you and you think that I have everything that I want. No, I'm not. I have not. I've never had everything that I wanted. The only reason that I've been happy is because I was happy with what I've got or what I've had. You know, living in peace with yourself and being happy with your surroundings and the people who are around you, you need to create that. You owe it to yourself to be happy. Okay, as you see, the stew is doing well. Now I am going to bring the heat up a little bit and put it on medium. It was on low, I'm putting it on the medium. And I think I need to take the cover off of the Sioux because the evaporation of the water and steam and all that, it defeats the purpose because I don't want it to have too much water. So let it boil and let the water evaporate a bit then what we'll do, if we need, then I'll cover it again. The rice is doing well. Do you remember I told you make sure that you put enough water? I did not put enough water. Why didn't I put enough water? Because I was cooking with others. I was on the other side. I thought if I put too much water in here, it may be too much and it may boil over. Now that I'm here, I raise the heat. Okay, and I, beautiful. Now is the time for me to add the saffron. Then the mushroom is the last thing. I'm going to add the saffron and the orange peels. With the orange peels, you have a choice. You either have to take the bitterness out, which I've shown you before. You soak it and boil it, but I don't want to take the bitterness out. I want to have that bitterness in some of them. So I'm just putting few of the orange peels. So when you bite, when you have a bite, you notice the bitterness a little bit. And I like that. And then, how much saffron you put, that's another, everything is optional, how much you, if you want to put saffron, I do but maybe you don't care for saffron that much. So you think they have to do it. The stew, the main ingredient for this stew is green beans, tomatoes, carrots, and uh, tomatoes and potatoes. Carrots and green beans, that's it. And onion, of course. Okay, and as you see, the water is evaporating, it's getting thin. Okay, and now it's time for the rice as you see so we are about to drain the rice since I want to show you how to put this in a pan and how to cover how to line your pan or bring everything out on 
the other side to show you. Now I'm going to cover the stew again. But the heat is okay, it's on medium. You drain the rice. At this time I'm going to taste my rice to see if the rice is how the salt is. Another thing that I do when I'm draining the rice, I put some cold water over it. What does the cold water do? The cold water stops the cooking process. So the rice won't overcook. Now we've got the pan, this is a small pan. The reason I use a small pan because with this dish sometimes I like to flip over the rice. In order to flip the rice when you put the oil you just make sure that you run the oil all around the edge of the pan. Salt is good. Just put enough to cover the bottom of the pan. And I'm beginning to think that I probably want to show you guys uh, some dishes that are made under an hour and and add a little bit of oil. For those of you who work hard, and then you come home, you wanna have a cook, home cooked meal. So then you add the rice. See when I tell you about my measuring and all that. See, that's enough to just fill up this. Now you shake it. You put some oil. And now the rice is ready to simmer. Now we're going to let the... And I've shown you before. In order for the water after the, I mean the steam, when we are steaming the rice, I always like to put a paper towel or a cloth so the water or the steam won't get into the rice and make your rice mushy. Okay, now we've got the stew. So look at it. See how beautiful it's cooking. And we've got the rice. And then I'm going to come back and show you the presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, now I'm back. Uh, the stew is almost ready. And the rice is ready. It took about uh, half an hour to 45 minutes for the stew and rice. It all depends how much rice you have. The bigger, the more amount of uh, rice and the bigger the pot that you have, so it's going to take longer. And I'm going to go back uh, there and show you, and we're going to add the mushroom and uh, uh, go with the presentation. Okay. Now what I normally like to do, to put the pot on a piece of cloth that is wet, or a paper towel, just let it sit here for a few seconds. 
Now is the time that you keep your fingers crossed and flip the rice over. And hope for the best. Slowly, 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 slowly. Wow. Okay. Sometimes when you do, you don't know what happens inside the pot. So when you want to, what you do, you just push this and make it as presentable as you can. And then now we're going to do the stew. See, as I told you, I don't want to have this stew to have too much juice. It's very important how you present your food. The presentation is very important. So you don't know what the cooks do, what the chefs do in the kitchen before you get the plate that you go into the restaurant. So make sure that you decorate your place your plate the way that it would be appealing to your guest, to yourself. Now when you look at this plate, you need to shift the juice to the other side of the plate. So this is what you do. See, I'm, giving, I'm showing you all the tricks, man. All the tricks. So. Now, and you know all about me, <clears throat> the way I... Excuse me. Then you start cleaning the edges. Make sure that it's all clean. The plate should invite you and tell you, come and eat me. And you know all about me, that I'm all about decorating my plate. Give me a minute to give it the final touch. Just make sure that there is no spot or anything. What you want the plates to show is exactly what you have in a plate and one of the teeth. 